Hello, this is Chuck from ServiceNow. In this video, I'm going to show you a few tools I use to help debug server-side scripts quicker and easier. This comes up a lot in the community, so I thought I would put together a few answers in one video. In this video, I highlight how to manage list fields, how to use script background to unit test your server-side scripts, how to use faux current to simulate the current object, and using debug business rules to see what's happening. These concepts can be applied to other scripts like UI actions, workflow scripts, and inbound actions, and plenty more on the server side. In this scenario, I'm going to take any incident that is not a P1 and changes to a P1 and add Fred Luddy to the watch list. And inversely, if it goes from a priority one to a lesser priority, I'm going to remove Fred from the watch list. First, I want to verify if Fred is already in the list before I add him, or if he's not, before I delete him, do some data validation so that I don't end up with duplicates or errors saying he wasn't found. I'm going to use an available script include that is available from my blog post that I'll tell you about at the end and show you how to bookmark that. And I'm going to use a best practice to avoid hard coding Fred into my business rule and use a property to identify him as the person I'm going to add to the watch list. So let's get started. So what I've done is created an application in Studio, I made a small scoped application that I will show you, call it P1 Demo, and it contains a few objects that I've already created. A business rule, which should do our requirement of assigning Fred to the watch list when an incident goes to P1, and I've got my when to run here. It's a before business rule because I'm trying to affect the current object before it gets committed to the database. And make that a little wider. Maybe the labels will realign a little smaller just so it looks a little right. And here's my condition that says priority changed to priority one. And I have a script in here that's going to go through and use the list util script include, which I'll link to in the uh, blog post that accompanies this video on the community. So you'll get to see that. It's been there for a while. I did need to make a few tweaks to it to get it to work with scoped. And I'll highlight those as well. That's included over here. And the only real changes I made from the original blog post in 2011, 2012, whatever it was, is I changed the JS util. I just took that out. It wasn't needed in this particular case. And down in the debug section, I have the gs.print was changed to a gs.info. So I just brought it up to modern standards for this exercise. I also have a property defined. So I'm not going to hard code Fred Luddy into my script. I'm going to go and retrieve him based on that username found in the property and get that record so that I can get at the society much, much easier. Let's run a test of my business rule. So let's take a look at a sample incident. Here's incident 1361. And I notice it is currently not a priority one. And Fred is not in the list. So if my business rule is running correctly, I'll change it to a P1, do a quick save, and look, oh, Fred's not added. That means there's something wrong. So step one is let's go to debug business rule under system diagnostics. This is a very handy tool for debugging business rules. And I've gotten responses from the community when I recommend this. People say, well, nothing happened. Nothing looks like it happens. It just activated the debug part. Now, if I go back to my incident, let's uh, take 1361 again. We'll temporarily make it a not a priority one, just so we can re-trigger that business rule. At least we hope we do. And the business rule was called demo in there somewhere. Look down on the bottom of the form, past the related lists, we suddenly have all of this information. And here is our app P1 demo business rule. These three equals tell me that it skipped it because the condition was not satisfied. So it's it, it skipped over. So I'm not going to run that for you. If it had, I would have seen something more like this down here. Let me make that just a little bit bigger for you. Where it says, this little right arrow says, I'm going into the business rule. I'm coming out of the business rule. I'm going into the business rules. I'm skipping the business rules. So you can easily debug when your business rule is running. Let's re-trigger that. I'm going to back that down just so labels look a little finer. And I'm going to change it back to a P1. 
And let's see if our business rule is at least triggering. I don't know why that field didn't get updated, but step one is, did the condition get met? We look for our P1 demo again. Let's turn off the global messages, for example. And it says, yes, it did go into the P1. Ah, the condition is fine. There's something wrong with the script. Here's where we get into scripts background and full current. Oh, pardon me. Go back to here. I have this script, but I'm not really sure what's wrong with it. So I'm going to test it along the way. I'm going to take the contents of that business rule and save it into some external editor that I've already framed up. Now, notice at the top, I have an incident ID, and then I say current equals new glide record incident. I'm going to simulate the current object with a specific record. Which record? Well, let's take the one I'm looking at, 1361, and copy the sysid, and put it right here in the incident ID, and I'll even say this is incident 001361, so I remember which one it is for next time in case I want to test a different incident record. I can comment this one out, put in a different incident ID, and flip between and make lots of easy to use use cases. Now that I have this faux current in place, I can go to scripts background, paste it in, and it says, here's your initial list. Fred is not in the list. And then it says, Fred is already in the list. Something's wrong here. Okay. I'm not triggering the condition. I'm just running this script regardless of whether it changed priority or not. Business rule is not being impacted here because I'm not triggering a business rule. I'm not updating any records. I'm just testing the guts of this script. I want to know, does the script do what I thought it to do? And apparently not. So we go and look at this and it says, well, here's my initial list. Yeah, that, that initial list right there. And the next thing it does is say, if Fred is in the list, then add him to the list. That doesn't sound like the right logic. I want to say if he's not in the list, because if he is in the list, I want to say he's already in the list. So I fix that, copy, paste, run. It says, here's your initial list. Fred was not there. So I'm going to add Fred Luddy to the list. Then his society shows up. Again, there's no current update in this because I don't want to do this in my script. If I did, I could put it there, but please remember to take it out when you do this last part. Now that I have the business rule debugged, I will go back to studio, paste in my new, new and improved script, click update, and let's go test it on a real incident. 1361, sounds like a good candidate to me. Here it is. It's currently set at priority one, so let's back it off. Save that. And let's collapse that. That's kind of getting in the way of me seeing instant results. Change it to a priority one. Save the incident. And so much for collapsing it. There's Fred. And if I look for my debug statements, it went into the business rule and it updated for me. If I wanted to see what values were, which fields were actually changing, I could use debug business rule details and it will tell you what fields are changing. You could also, one of my favorite new tricks, go to the watch list and say, watch this field. And the little field watcher comes up and says, great, what would you like to watch? And I'd like to watch business rules that are running on it and see what's happening. That's another alternative. I like the field watcher, but I can do away with that for now. Let's put that away. Bye. So my second objective was now that Fred is in this list, if it changes from a P1 to something else, I want to take him out. Very easy to do. Let's take this same script and let's make a new business rule out of it. Oops. Studio, create application file, server development, business rule sounds good, and we'll call this remove Fred, even though it's Fred agnostic, it's user agnostic. I'm going to do this just for the sake of argument. Incident, just so they match. Advanced, yes. Still want to run it before every insert and every update, and my condition will be priority, changes before it was a changes from a two changes to priority one i want to change it from priority one that's my condition 
my advanced is going to be changed ever so slightly. So I say, if he is in the list, let's go and remove from list that sysid. How did I know that? Because I looked in the list util and there is the API that says, is he in the list? How do you use it? Returns a Boolean, add to the list, pass it a sysid, remove from list, pass it a sysid. The usage is all there. If I remove this business rule, then I obviously want to say removed, change the comment, remove the leader from the list, and is not in the list. So if it's not found, I can say, hey, I'm not taking Fred out because he wasn't in the list in the first place. Let's save that. Make sure that it works on our old friend 1361, who is currently at a P1 with Fred sitting there. And somebody says, no, nope, it's no longer a P1. I will hit update, should hit save. Sorry about that. And sure enough, Fred is not in the watch list and I can play this all day. Go back to the P1, watch the business rule trigger and he's back. Two business rules working just like they should. I hope you enjoyed this scenario and learned how you can manage list fields, use scripts background to debug and unit test your server side code, Use full current that I talked about to simulate the objects in business rules and UI actions and more. And of course, use debug business rules to examine your code. If you have any comments, be sure to list them below on the community and bookmark this blog post by using the link on the right and you can reference it quickly later. For more information like this, check out the TechNow videos and visit developer.servicenow.com and of course, bookmark those as well if, you, if you're so inclined. To use bookmarks, Click your name, and when the drop-down appears, click on your name in big, bold title right under your picture. That will bring up another page that has a menu on it. Select More, and there are all the bookmarked objects you bookmarked before, so you can reference them quickly later rather than having to go search for them. Thank you very much for watching this video.